All right, so we had live coding session number two uh, just now. It is um, around noon uh, here, and so um, we finished it up. Um, we did not get as far as I would have liked. Uh, the, the entire point of the session was to have a, a wireframe throughout our complete application. Um, uh, we spend a lot of time in uh, reframe, figuring out how the different new parts of it work. Um, in the end, it means that we have a couple of screens to show. And that means that next week we will have uh, another session on the wireframes before we move on to the um, server side implementation of our service. Um, so let's see what we built and then I will walk you through what we actually did to make that happen. Um, let's first just start with what we built. Uh, basically we create a login form that accepts anybody. Uh, it will launch you to a screen that tells you, hey, who logged in? And it allows you to create a new game. And uh, instead of a game, we have one question. Uh, a question form that says, how cool is clergy script? And if you click a button, it will tell you if the answer was correct or false. True or false, in this case, meh, does not give clergy script any justice because it's very awesome. So it should be true. And uh, that's how far we got. Uh, and what was needed for it? Well, there's a really nice chart that I created and that we need to take a uh, look at. We used a program called Reframe or a library really. Um, and Reframe allows you to structure your code in bits and pieces. And in our case, we created um, a a chord that starts up our application. We created a fuse namespace, which has all the screens uh, attached to it. We have an event namespace, which deals with event handlers, um, things that happen and what you want to do with it. Um, we have a subscription namespace. It uh, has all the subscription to data from within the database. So if you take a look at the schema that I created, zoom in um, everything in reframe centers around a handler or a handler is one of the main concepts let's say it like that a handler is the main concept and we focused on it the handler um, has many things that can happen but um, the first being that it can be wrapped with interceptors and interceptors being a form of middleware um, they have a before and after attribute, which means that you can have stuff happen before your, uh, your handler gets to it and afterwards. So for instance, if you want to have debug information or anything, you can wrap it there. And then there's the movement from nothing to a fully handled event handler. Uh, the, the first part, part is called the forward sweep the last part being the backward sweep the first deals with co-effects and the last part deals with effects if we look at co-effects the way i look at it is that when an event handler chain the, the entire chain starts it has nothing absolutely nothing uh, so the co-effects build up the uh, context which is passed into the handler so the context lives on and jumps from uh, uh, co-effect to co-effect to co-effect to the handler to the uh, effect to the effect to the effect so the co-effect needs data your handler needs access to the database uh, perhaps even local storage or you just want to insert a timestamp for which the event was triggered and uh, so you can create co-effects that do just that, uh, add the database, which is one of the built-in ones, add the data from a local store or even a, a timestamp and pass that along to the handler. And then from the handler, you can either 
do nothing and then you have a pure function it only manipulates the data that it has but it does not have any side effects or you can have a side effect an, an effect on the outside world for instance you want to dispatch something else in our case we had a handler that dispatched to the system that we should change a page so uh, you press the login button login says well yay i know this user i trust it all is good i add that to my database the user is now logged in but as a result the application should change to a different page so the handler would call a dispatch to another handler which will deal with going through the pages and um, uh, one thing that we will look on further on is the uh, ability to do http calls um, so in order to talk to your own web services things like that so it's it it has a lot of things to wrap your mind around but it it works really really nice once you get it running we had some issues getting it to run because um, we are using the new 080 version of reframe which is new so it has changed um, and that means that we need to take a look at the stuff that changed so if we start at a uh, our start page what happens uh, if you remember from uh, the first summary video we have an init function that calls the mount root mount root basically builds up the application we added a, a call to dispatch sync, which will call an event handler called initialize DB. So if we go to the events, initialize DB, it's all the way on the bottom here. Can I center it a little bit? Uh, initialize DB, it uh, has a function which gets a database from the context as a uh, parameter uh, we log to the console to say hey we're initializing you see it right here bam um, and what we do is we return db default value and uh, in our case the default default value is just a structure with a name and a current active page um, so the view that is being rendered if we go to core, core, uh, core, we tell it instead of the hello world, we're now telling it to render a view called main page. And main page is actually not a view. Um, it is a method. It is a method here that subscribes to a piece of information called active page. An active page is a, a subscription, active page right here, where it says the person subscribing to me should receive the data that is within active page within the database itself. Um, and in our case, at the moment when the application starts, that would be colon login or the keyboard login um, so that gets loaded and at this time the uh, variable active page will contain colon login and uh, it will then construct a function which will have a diff which will say show page active page and it will dereference the uh, variable up there and it will call show page show page in its own uh, prints out a page oh sorry for that uh, it prints out page and that we see here page colon login and it will then call the multi-method pages page name so that means that we created a multi-method which has a parameter called login and it will call uh, factually um, uh, the method login panel and login panel uh, well we get uh, twitter notifications quite funny um, the login panel 
and it's just a method which creates a regent atom and we created this to be a placeholder for the name that is being entered in this username field and there's many ways to get data from uh, a field of course um, and we, we picked this one. I don't know if it's a really good solution at this moment, but it works. Uh, the form is being built using the hiccup syntax. Um, and when you enter some data in this field, you say Aryan, um, the onChange handler here is called. OnChange we defined to be a reset of the name the variable named Adam to the value that it is currently in and that would be username right here and then when you click the login button it will dispatch a uh, event called login with a parameter being the name that was entered in username so if we go to event event will have login Login takes a piece of data and it, re it has a side effect. This is one of those functions, uh, one of those events that has a side effect. And the side effect being that we want to do a dispatch with the login success as a uh, parameter. So from this, immediately afterwards, there will be a dispatch to login success which in itself will do a dispatch and it will say change the active page to create game an active page will then update the database to have the active page of in this case colon create game that means that we enter on this beautiful start page for our game uh, which is basically here uh, we struggle a little bit with the nav bar. Uh, I'm not very happy with how it is now, but at least we got to show, we got to see how it works and that it subscribes to the username data right here. Um, and all this page does is that it provides a button which will dispatch the create game event. And then turn off the sound for my computer um, create game event and the create game is also a event handler with a side effect because create game not only sets up the data in our case we just set it up for one single question so it sets up the database to contain one question and this is our data structure for um, our game we currently have one question and a bunch of answers and we tell it which answer is correct um, but it also does that dispatch to the active page event handler to say now go to the page ask question um, so if we do this bam we get into the page ask question the multi-method is called here again it says ask question you should render the view ask question which is quite straightforward and uh, I think we can even wrap this up into a, a logged in view where we have a bunch of things already but we will keep it simple for now so ask question subscribes to the data from the database saying current question so this form is already in a state that we can reuse it over and over as long as we fill the variable or the, 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 the map current question in its database and it will change nicely etc so it will uh, get the question it will display it saying all right here we will put the question out of the question and then we will create a map or a list really of buttons uh, which is a function called create answer which had a little bit of a twist to it in the sense that due to us creating 
HTML uh, hiccup elements in a list, we need to supply a key that identifies that element. Uh, we did not have any form of identifier. So what we did is we gave the key um, the value of the answer to the question, um, which is probably not very uh, smart, but it works for now. Um, and then we constructed one of those buttons, the, the, the meh, uh, it's okay, awesome, rubbish. Um, and we associated the on click handler with the JS alert saying, this is the answer. This is the, the, the truth of the answer that you create, you gave me. And then we completed our run tree. Um, we did not get much further because our time uh, was up. We spent an hour, an hour and 40 minutes uh, on this already going through it, talking through it. Um, so for now, it is in quite a good state. I created a um, uh, git check-in uh, for it uh, and a new tag. If we go to GitLab and to Trivia. Uh, and, uh, Let's see that the fast commits. Uh, I created, I checked it in the live coding session 002 and we created, I created a tag for it, live coding 002. There was some issue with uh, downloading the Phantom JS um, dependency. So the, the build failed. I, I proceeded to upgrade the Phantom JS uh, library, but I don't think it had a, a lot to do with it. Um, second time it worked perfectly. So maybe we should fix that and put the Phantom JS as part of the project. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I want to I, will, I want to highlight from this that we used that is very 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 useful is the HTML to hiccup tool. I added it to the comment uh, to the uh, description of the live stream. Uh, it's at coldnew.github.io slash HTML to hiccup. And it allows you to paste some HTML code and you will get your hiccup code, which you use in uh, the clutch script. So you don't need to type it in. You can just use the boilerplate or the examples from the different frameworks, put them in and uh, be happy with it. Um, other sites that are of use, the reframe documents uh, are really useful. Um, they are at github.com slash day eight slash reframe uh, and they're in the repository. So you do reframe docs and then you click on one. Um, re really useful documentation. Please use it. Um, next week we will finish it up and uh, have a really nice working application. So until then, be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Um, click, press the thumbs up button because anybody likes to be appreciated. Um, you can also take a look at my website called buildfunthings.com and uh, it has uh, extra blog posts about uh, keeping up to date with lining and stuff like that. Um, it's really useful. I uh, appreciate any, any thumbs up that you can give. Um, see you next week, Friday, 10 a.m. and we will finish it up. Bye-bye.